Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> hey, replay viewers, because we know you exist. Yes. <laughs> uh, Danielle Smith here. I am Bianca Cotton. Hello. <laughs> so I am the founder of Becoming Secure, and Bianca Cotton uh, is Danielle the Smith founder of Bianca. Behind the Confidence Map. And she's sharing the live video, so yeah. forgive us for a moment. Yes. <laughs> so we are on this evening. Hey, Jessica. Welcome. We are joining in this evening. I wanted to interview Bianca. So as you all know, I just wrote a book called uh, Taking Breaks with Jesus. I did something on it last night. Go on my page and you can watch it. Um, but I don't think it would have been possible without the people that God put in my life. And Bianca was one of those huge, huge people that God put in my life and pushed Push, push. I call her a birthing coach. <laughs> yes, we push her out. <laughs> yes. I think I knew her for, what, 45 minutes? Maybe. Give me your number. <laughs> I'll call you and have you push your blog out. Did I get a text message Sunday night after that Friday of meeting her? Yes. Yes. So if you need a push, <laughs> I'm your woman. <laughs> So what I'm going to do this evening, um, just a little over a year ago, Bianca went from working um, as a career, working a career, being a mom and a wife, and then she added a blog, three <laughs> books, facilitator of over five Release the Fears events, and that she presented to women and to young ladies in different like schools and environments. <laughs> When do I sleep, right? Why? I get my sleep, y'all. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> and that's what I think amazes me the most because I'm single and I couldn't figure out how to write a blog, write a book, do all this stuff, cook, have fun, and she was doing it like a boss, okay? And exercise too, right? <laughs> yes, and I had that in here too and I skipped over it, but yes. So it's like, wow, it, you know, she did all of this stuff and she never lost her mom duties, her wife duties, you know, and living a balanced life with friends and family and then staying healthy. You know, like, wow. <gasps> it's I, possible. <laughs> <laughs> and there's two things there there's balance and then there's actually perseverance like you're pushing through and you're doing something past fears because yes. i know you have some fears oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so behind the confident smile is like the umbrella for all of these things that she's done and done wonderfully by the way and it is, um, so the purpose of Behind the Confident Smile is to inspire women to walk in love, live in hope, and be healed from past hurts. Mm -hmm. And it's almost two years old, you I know. And June. <laughs> oh, I'm becoming a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bianca, I have a couple of questions for you. Awesome. All right. So, I wanted to know, can you tell us how you've overcome fear? And I have a couple of topics of how she's overcome fear in, okay? Mm. So, a couple of the areas are getting married. Mm being a mom labor hmm. oh <laughs> she's getting ready to have baby number two yeah and then the baby bump under the tape <laughs> <laughs> and then sharing a blog and writing three books not one not two three and i'm sure she's on the works of another one somewhere around there that we all don't know about nobody knows <laughs> <laughs> and then creating workshops and actually facilitating other women to release fear. So how have you overcome <laughs> the fear in those areas? <laughs> I, I, ooh, that's a lot. Um, I think I'll start with marriage. Okay. Because this, I think that's an interesting journey for me um, to begin with. So uh, let's see. Back in 2013, Oh, yeah, 2019 already. Back in 2013, <laughs> I decided to stop dating. And I quit dating. And y'all might say, what do you mean? How you going to know who your husband is? So my prayer to God um, was, I need you to send my husband um, to me because I'm no longer dating. This is not working out for me. I'm the world. 
I'm the worst girlfriend because <laughs> I am acting like a wife in a girlfriend role and that's not working for me. Mm. So <laughs> as a result, <laughs> I dumped dating. <baby. laughs> and who would have ever thought that I, uh, would get reconnected um, to my now husband in 2013 after making that declaration and mm -hmm. praying that prayer. And we were friends for three years before um, deciding to get married and we never dated. Wow. We just got married. And uh, along those three years, God was sending signs that this was my husband. I, I, I told God that I would not say anything that he would have to recognize who I was to him. That's hard. <laughs> oh yeah, to keep your, <laughs> to keep your mouth shut. But for me, it wasn't. It was easy because I was so tired of going through this mm -hmm. cycle of dating and knowing on the onset of dating these people um, that I was in a relationship with, that it wasn't going to last. Like God kind of told me that. And I guess I really didn't believe it at first, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I knew it. And so I didn't want to continue to go in these cycles of unhealthy relationships or relationships that weren't meant for me in the long term. So as you started kind of going through the process of like courtship or not courtship, really, because you guys were friends, but even just engagement and then that process, mm -hmm. I'm sure there were questions in your head of how things were going to work out oh, and yeah. things like that. How mm -hmm. did you balance that and keep pushing forward? Like what Ooh. did you do? Cho choosing faith over fear, right? Yeah. To, to say that you're not going to date anymore <laughs> is a faith move. Um, and overcoming that fear of being looked at weird when uh, you say that to people and especially to people who don't <laughs> believe in what you believe in nor believe in God <laughs> like they don't believe in my data and they don't believe in God two different groups of folks so yeah. I believe when I was having those conversations that people were waiting around to see what was going to happen but because I have friends that God introduced me to who were doing the same thing and they introduced me to a book called God is Your Matchmaker by Stephanie Herzog. That's where the concept of waiting mm -hmm. um, came from and not dating and it gave me a different perspective on um, dating and how dating really didn't exist in the Bible mm -hmm. and I was like well so why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. You know why would I do something that God didn't really say that I had to. So I'm really hearing you all that faith. Um, so number one, I think something different had to come in. A new perspective came in for her. And then I'm hearing that her faith um, in God and holding on to that and that he knew what was best for her definitely was what kept her being able to move forward rather than to pin herself backwards and be stuck in fear. Yeah, so I launched into the deep with that one and we just celebrated three years on Monday. Woo! Woo <laughs> <laughs> so it is possible. There are people out there doing it. We're not the only ones. We didn't kiss until we got married. Um, so it's possible, y'all, with prayer, accountability, and faith in God. So that was that was the marriage piece. Um, I gotta. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna chime in to those that are newcomers. You all, this is Bian uh, Bianca Cotton, <laughs> uh, founder of Behind the Confident Smile. Danielle Smith, founder of Becoming Secure. We are just quickly discussing and interviewing Bianca about how she's overcome so much with fear and balanced her life to write three books and do a lot of stuff. Okay, <laughs> go back and watch the replay. Um. So yeah. So now looking at how did you overcome fear of being a mom? You're going Ooh. to get ready and start <laughs> stewarding a whole nother life yeah right and so um i can imagine that being fearful not just the process of it changing your body mm -hmm. but now also this little person oh, uh, yes. yeah little people so <laughs> before before the little person y'all when my husband and I got married. I instantly became a mother because he had a son from a previous marriage. So I instantly became a mom. Um, and he's now 14 years old. So on the onset, I was just like, whew, 
you know, you just learn as you go. <laughs> you just do mm -hmm. it, right? Um, so I continue to learn as I go with that. But then two weeks later, um, we can see our first child um, between the both of us. And so newly married mom now, mm -hmm. I'm carrying my first child who's um, a girl. She's two years old now. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready, Lord. But he wanted her to be here, right? Um, and going through the process of growing and developing this young lady in the womb and learning what to eat. And I just soaked up every book, blog, talked to every woman <laughs> who uh, was a friend of mine that had children and gleaned wisdom from them. And it was definitely a faith walk because any aching pounds, like, what's that? I don't know what that is. And my bone, my rib hurt, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> It, it's it's all been a faith journey uh, since, and even still with the uh, as our children develop, you still learn about them and develop with them as their parents. So every day is a learning process, and you overcome fears, and you pray that you're doing the right thing for them and steering them in the direction that they need to go. Okay. All right. So yes. now on top of being a wife and being a mom, you started, uh, when I first met you at a bowling alley mm -hmm. on accident that neither one of us wanted to go to. Right. Because I was tired after work on a Friday. And um, and I think I was still on maternity leave when okay. I met. Yeah. Okay. And um, we started talking and you said how you had just released uh, your blog. Yeah. And tell us a little bit how you overcame fear Ooh. with allowing other people to read your words. That, that's it. That was, that was a big one for me. So um, for those introverts out there, you know, <laughs> I'd rather be by myself, y'all, sometimes. <laughs> you probably can't tell, but I, that's how I recharge. I recharge by writing, journaling, just you know, being um, not isolated, but quiet still, right? And I've been writing for a long time and never publicly shared it on a blog like type platform. And as I was transitioning back to work after having my daughter and on maternity leave, how the blog came about was I was praying and asking God for my purpose and really seeking what I was placed on this earth to do. And also at that time, I wasn't ready to go back to work. And I was like, I just need another way to make money. Show me, Lord. And he was like, start writing to encourage women. I was like, how is that supposed to make me money <laughs> right now? <laughs> you know, like the right now. And I delayed in my obedience, right? Um, and that word, and two, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. <laughs> trust me, but don't don't get into that, y'all. But um, I did that for maybe two or three months, and I came back around to the same prayer. Lord, what did what can I do? What's my purpose? And He took me back to the last thing He told me was right to encourage women. So I said, you know what? I don't think he's going to tell me anything else until <laughs> I do what he asked me to do. And I, you know what? I'm going to do it scared, right? I wasn't necessarily happy to share my thoughts and my heart with the public. Uh, but I knew it was, if I didn't do it, I was going to be in the same place. Asking the same question and feeling stuck. And who likes to feel stuck? Not I. Mm -hmm. So I released that first blog post in June of 2017 and have been writing since. And at that time, as I was sharing it, people were like, oh, how often is it going to be? I said, the Holy Spirit lead me <laughs> to write. That's how often I'm going to write. So <laughs> it would come once a week, maybe every other week and before i knew it that's how the release the fear meetup came about god dropped that in my spirit next after i was consistent with writing the blog post to encourage women about healing in the heart and um acknowledging your past hurts and facing your fears all the things that i had dealt with 
um, and what's currently dealing with I was writing about. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Now, I know procrastination. I think uh, you guys have heard that. <laughs> Typically, <laughs> procrastination is a part of fear. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. find yourself procrastinating and taking forever and sitting on an idea for a long period of time, it's because there's something underlining, and the underlining thing is fear. Mm-hmm. And it may look different for everybody. Um, for me, sitting on a book and somebody else sitting <laughs> on a book for a while, a lot of it becomes fear because yeah. of not knowing how someone else is going to view it yeah. or you know what kind of critical um, views are you going to have is it going to be enough so Bianca has <laughs> has this book that she sat on for a while oh yeah <laughs> I think almost three and a half years y'all <laughs> and finally pushed it out I, you pushed it out after you started kind of rolling through your the, the blog. blog and the meetups right yeah. you did a meetup no. first um, the book was released first, then the okay. meetup came. Okay. But it was it happened in the same month. And yes. one month, the so same you've month. been this, sitting on for three years in one month. Yeah, two, two things happening at once. That's I feel that way now. In December 2017, I remember it like it was yesterday. So <laughs> I was up and I said, "This book is going to be published tonight." <laughs> and yeah. When you are determined to make something work or to do it, you're going to figure it out. So I was self-publishing it, and a friend of mine who was watching live, Jessica, was coaching me through how to self-publish my book. And I had ran into a snag with trying to upload my book cover that I had had for three years, y'all. It's not like I wasn't prepared to release this book three years ago. I allow fear to stop me from releasing it. I have the book cover, the content. I just didn't know how to wow. actually make it a book, like a literal thing that you can hold. That was one of my uh, hangups. And my other hangup was allowing people into my heart, into my mind, and into what was going on with me. And back to that wanting to keep myself to myself. But how can you help? people if you're not willing to share yourself right and be free Mm -hmm. literally walk in freedom which is dropping the old rags right so saying you know that's not me no more this is who I am today so this is the book right here that I finally released uh oh this is (laughs) December of 2017 I think maybe December 5th or something like that um and it's called a journey through a beautiful mind because it's taking you through my journey, my two-year journey of my life's ups and downs and being a silent sufferer. And it's in poetic format because at the time that I was writing this, I was seeking therapy, didn't like the therapist that I was seeing in college. So I turned to writing and my writing flowed out through poetry and it was just in my journal. If if I had in my way, it would have stayed in my journey, right? <laughs> <laughs> and when I have turned into a book, but because of encouragement from those who I started to share, like one piece of poetry with another piece, I was like, oh, Bianca, you should publish that. And I was like, who? It's going to read my journal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm not, you know. So do you mind if I share? I my would first love you to share, yeah. So my first entry that's in here comes from November 2010. And none of the poetry in this book has titles because it was my journal, right? So it's just my thoughts in poetic format. All my stories. My eyes burn from the tears I cry. When will the pain end? Matter, matter of fact, a better question is when did it all begin? Did it start by seeing my brother struggle or watching my mother wrestle with defeat? Did it start with seeing the black man being the head of the household, but my mother really was the backbone? Did it start with being mocked, ignored, and pointed at because of hatred? Or did it start as I witnessed my brother gunned down by another brother because of a street corner? My eyes burn from the tears I cry from the injustice, from the helplessness I see in your eye, from my sister being diagnosed with AIDS, from my brother being lost in his rage, when will the pain end? Matter of fact, a better question is when did it all begin? And so my poetry, (laughs) 
I know some of y'all are doing that. <laughs> it flows direct. It flows directly from my heart, um, my personal experiences, from what I was seeing and experiencing in my environment, and just finally letting it out, right? And I believe this is another reason why I released the fear flow from me that God gave me that because writing for me is a release. Some people talk, some people exercise, you know, some people drink coffee, some people turn to drugs, <laughs> but <laughs> mine was my pen and paper. And it continues to be a release for me. It's therapeutic. It's even how I pray. Like I journal prayers. Mm. It's it's my like one of my primary communication styles um with God. So that's definitely um, my release on paper and just flows with dysfunctional relationships to happy moments to um, what it means to suffer in silence. Everything, y'all. Anything and everything that happened in that two year period. Wow. Amazing. And just letting <laughs> other people read something that was very personal. Yeah. I in in myself will be very fearful of that. So I, I can definitely <laughs> understand why you sat on it for a couple yes. of years. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on my computer for that long, just sitting there. So a couple of questions that I wanted to ask Bianca, because I, I'm very encouraged and have been very encouraged by her um, ever since I met her. And um, as I continue to keep getting to know her, I'm just like, wow, really? Oh, you know. <laughs> and um, so I wanted to kind of help others that are kind of contemplating, thinking about wanting to start a business, mm -hmm. wanting to start a blog, wanting to um, encourage people, start an organization. It can look completely differently than what we're doing. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to look like that, but it's going against the grain of what everybody else around you is doing. It's not easy. Um, you are going to face some fears, oh, but yes. <laughs> you definitely can do it afraid and to accomplish it. So I wanted to ask her some of these questions just to kind of pick her brain Mm -hmm. so that we can grow from that I grow from other people's experiences um, and so I wanted to know when did you first notice fear was an issue for you and how did mm -hmm. you overcome it first <laughs> notice it was when I can comprehend it Whew. so the first thought that came out was third grade uh, I was telling Danielle earlier in third grade, I tried out for the chilling team and I didn't make it. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, I want to be a cheerleader. <laughs> so for a whole year, I practiced my split. I was stretching. I was working at home to get ready to try out again the next year. And I think that was maybe one of my earliest moments of recognizing that I had fear of what if I don't make it again? Mm -hmm. Like after I try it again, am I good enough? Do they see me? Am I worthy? Am I not the right shape to be a cheerleader? You know, mm -hmm. am I too young? So all these questions that start to come into your mind when fear and doubt um, tries to enter your heart and discourage you from moving forward in life. And at a young age, you all. Yeah. A very young age. So be mindful of your children, nieces, yeah. nephews, grandchildren, or just people around you in general. And listen to them speak. And then you start to hear fear because it fear can sound like comparison. Mm -hmm. it, it can be frustration. It can be um all types of things, procrastination, mm -hmm. anger. If you ask, what's the root of this? Why are you mm -hmm. acting like this? Well, I'm scared. Like, you might get, you know, yeah. get to the root of why mm -hmm. people are acting the way they are. Prideful. Mm -hmm. it, behind that is insecurity. Behind that is fear. Fear got many cousins, y'all. It does. <laughs> <laughs> We got a lot of relatives. <laughs> we don't like them, though. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -mm. Got to get rid of them. Mm hmm Okay. Um, and so how did, did you say how you overcame? That oh, how I, over, I tried out again. Okay. So, oh, and I yeah, made the you team. Did afraid. Yeah, I did yeah. afraid. <laughs> and I had, to, you know, we had to try out in front of all the current cheerleaders. And I was just like, do I have to? Like, can this be a private 
try out. <laughs> no, <laughs> did it again and I made it. So from a young age, I learned if I want something, if, I want, if I'm going to go for it, work for it. You know, try and try again mm -hmm. and see what happens. Yeah. And, you know, even in the process of trying and continuing to keep trying, um, it builds uh, a perseverance inside mm -hmm. of you. Um, and a confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And the outcome doesn't always matter. And I think how you process through the outcome is also very important. Um, it, accomplishing something, me being a performance driven person, like my whole self esteem was built on how good I perform. Um, and, and the outcome doesn't always add up to be what, it, what you think it should be. <laughs> right. Um, and so then you're left disappointed anyway, but, <laughs> but you did it right. Mm -hmm. So you're not left wondering what would have happened if I tried versus yeah. I yes. went for it. And it didn't quite work out how I envisioned it, but I'm building muscle mm -hmm. for the next time. Yes. I'm building perseverance, as Danielle said, for yes. the next time. I'm building confidence. Mm -hmm. um, I'm building accountability now. Maybe I've developed some relationships in the process, and we can work together yes. to strengthen one another. Um, so the next time this situation comes around, we have a, a better response. We're more effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's less about the accolades and the medals that you can collect, which is great. You have to learn how to celebrate those, too. Right. Which can be a struggle, too. <laughs> <laughs> we got to celebrate, y'all. Yeah. That's another another live. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, that was one of our release the fears back in uh, December. We celebrated our accomplishments. Because yeah. we don't, as women, uh, especially as women with, that wear multiple hats in multiple aspects of life. We just keep going. Oh, you wrote a book, great. Keep going. It's like, no, yes. let's pause. No what can I do next? Hmm. Mm. Let's pause and just bask in this glory here. So, and my pusher again. <laughs> how, how is it going? How is the book launch and all of that? How does it feel? And I'm like, I don't even know if I really <laughs> processed this yet. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. It's good to have those circle of people around you, uh, which I think is another way that you definitely mm, yeah. overcome. That's fear. another way to overcome fear by sharing your fears with your inner circle. So whoever your inner circle is, um, whether it's friends, family, spouses, coworkers, people you trust, people who are um, know when to push you, yeah. know when to hug you, know when to say, nah, nah, nah. We're yes. not doing that today. Uh, those are very critical relationships. And when you release your fears onto them, they can keep you in check with them. Like, mm -hmm. I think you're just being fearful. Mm -hmm. You should go ahead and do that. Yeah. You be like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> or like, nah, that's not it. And then you go and think about it like, hmm, maybe it is. Mm -hmm. I haven't given it much thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to ask another question. Um, can you tell us how you've maintained having a fearless life? Oh, <laughs> uh, what do you put in place? That definitely was one of the answers. The friends, right? Prayer. Y'all. Oh, geez. Prayer. Keeping prayer. Um, having a relationship with God. Scriptures. I have a list of scriptures in my phone that talks about fear and how God did not give us the spirit of fear. And do you know the Bible talks about God not giving us fear or telling us do not have fear 365 times. Wow. So that's, that's one for each sure. day. We're yeah. not including a leap year, but one for <laughs> each day of the year. So he's constantly reminding us do not fear. I got you. Wow. Do not fear. You're going to be fine. Do not fear. It may look like a tornado, but you're not going to die. You know, <laughs> do not fear. Launch the book. Do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Do not fear. Start the business. Do not fear. Go back to school. Do not fear. Ask mm -hmm. for the raise. Do not fear. You fill in the blank, right? Right. So prayer, having a relationship with God, reading God's word, constantly, you know, feeling Filling this vessel up before you can pour out. Having friends um, and family members close to you that are on the same page. 
that you can pull on to like you know what today i'm not feeling it mm-hmm. i just feel like <laughs> giving up <laughs> they're like <laughs> no no bianca i'll help you and you're like okay you know that's important too and i will also say um listening to holy spirit when uh he asks you to make those bold moves and you do it mm-hmm. you launch into the deep that's another way to continue to live life fearlessly because the more you release fear the more you release it it's if that makes sense y'all like the the more i peel back the more i need to peel back I'm like oh mm-hmm. i accomplished that yeah okay here's another layer mm-hmm. and here's another layer and you just keep on going and you really don't know how many there are until you start going through the (laughs) process and i wouldn't say it necessarily gets easier each time but you always have something to look back at to encourage you encourage you to keep going Mm -hmm. like oh this you know feels a little bit heavier but if he brought me through Mm -hmm. getting married and not dating (laughs) right (laughs) if he brought me through having a car accident and the person not pressing charges. <laughs> like, you know, all types of stuff. Right. Yes. All right. Gotcha. You know. <laughs> Definitely. I would say I also noticed in your life, rest is a mm. part of it. Oh, yes. And I had a great question from Jessica yesterday <laughs> that talked about how do you rest. And uh-huh. resting really is a faith thing. Oh, it is. And it not is. a fear thing. Because in the life and living here in america other countries are a little bit different but living in america it's all about the grind right you gotta grind Mm -hmm. not really um (laughs) god didn't ask us to grind (laughs) he just asked us to follow him he'll direct us he'll guide us and he tells us to rest for a reason because mm-hmm. we need to recharge we need to check in with him we need to check in with ourselves um so i totally believe in taking naps and sleeping Man. and eating three <laughs> meals a day with two snacks and t- <laughs> exercise and taking walks and yeah. breathing like mentally um i incorporate rest into my day yeah i guess a part it's a part of me i must rest because i know what i look like without it and Mm -hmm. i'm not happy camera (laughs) without without rest and you have to learn yourself and learn your limits it's like okay i work nine to five every day and sometimes right at night or work on my business but that's not every night like I'm going to bed or I'm watching a TV show that I probably binge waste too many hours on. But that's a part of resting, releasing it unto God and letting him do yeah, the work. Definitely. It becomes a, a fear thing when you start seeing that you're trying to juggle yeah. so much and keep up and you can't handle it and you're trying and you're wearing yourself out and your body's worn out and you're just like oh man but i gotta get this and i gotta get this and i gotta control this and i gotta control right. that and control like, you all comes out of fear. fear yes like you like we are the the authors and the finishers of our life no you can't control everything something a lot of things are out of our hands yeah like down to taking a mental health day so what I mean by that is maybe using a sick day um, at work to just rest. Go home, take a nap, mm-hmm. rest. You know when you're about there. Yes. <laughs> and your <laughs> colleagues <Yeah>. do too. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure for various reasons. I know people can read on my face. Oh, come on, I'm going to take a day off. <laughs> I'm like, did you get your nap? Mm. No, they're like, okay, maybe you should go home early. So, do you want to share about that? Okay, so can you, our final question you want <laughs> um, can you tell us more about your event um, that you're having, which is called Break the Silence? Okay, and then some <laughs> of your plans for the future. Okay, y'all. Um, so, Break the Silence Workshop is a workshop for women geared towards helping 
moment to really talk about the issues that we struggle with in silence. Um, and part of that is fear. So the second book that I wrote called Releasing the Fear Every Day is a workbook. And this uh, workshop is built on this workbook and it goes step by step through how to release your fears and come out of silence. So this is like one of the pages. So y'all get an inside scoop. Step one, <laughs> what is your fear? And <laughs> sometimes we don't ask ourselves those questions. Like, yeah. you know, I'm dealing with anxiety. Why is that? Like, yeah. where did it come from? So mm -hmm. how long has it been there? How long has it been there? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. You will be surprised if yeah. you actually sat down and thought about that question. Mm -hmm. How long have you dealt with this? What are your triggers? So that's what the workshop is geared towards. Um, and it's April 6th here in Chicago, if you're local. Yeah. Um, and the link that's in the heading of this video, you can go to my website at BehindTheConfidenceMail.com to register. Registration ends this Saturday, March 30th. That's right. Mm -hmm. About to get into April, y'all. Yeah. So <laughs> check it out. If you got wives, you know, sign them up. If you want to sponsor somebody, do yes. that too, you know. Yes. We all we all need time to decompress and time to reflect um, in order to move into purpose. Yes. And fear is an enemy of purpose, y'all. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to live. And, you know, we're constantly thinking in our heads. I know um, women definitely, right? I can speak for us. We always thinking. I wake up having these a bathroom in the middle of the night, and I'm like, why is my brain still thinking? Shut off for yeah. a moment, please. Yeah. And when you're constantly overthinking and doing all of that, it's like, and you're in your own head, you need somebody else's perspective. And um, a lot of times, that's really, I'm telling you, I went to Bianca's first release the fear that she had and I'm like okay I'm gonna do this to support my friend I don't know if I'm really gonna be able to do anything with these fears do I really have fears I'm not really truly ready to confront these I don't mm. think and I came anyway and I'm telling you it has been like a hill me running up whatever you want to talk about <laughs> I've been overcoming these fears and um I needed the perspective of other people. I needed to see how she saw me because I can see myself in a negative light, right? And then I also needed to see, oh, well, maybe it isn't that hard to just go ahead and click on Amazon or on KDP Publishing and start putting right. in what I've <laughs> written. And then, you know, so, and it really wasn't. It really didn't take a ton of time to do it. Yeah. Um, and someone else's perspective. So check it out, you guys. Share that. Share that to the women that you know need it. And it could be, it doesn't mean that this person isn't confident or bold right. in areas. Um, I think we all have fears in different areas and it may not look huge compared to others, um, but it could still be something that yeah. is necessary to process. And if you do feel that you've overcome fear in many ways, come and be a help and a support to someone yeah. else. And it's also about building community back yeah. to what we said previously, not walking alone. So when you are learning to break silence, you are breaking down walls of isolation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I get it. I can do this by myself. <laughs> but you up here going crazy in your head. Nobody Ooh. else nobody else know. They can't war with you. They can't pray with you because and they don't carry know, that burden. They don't know your battles. Yeah. Because you're living in isolation. Mm -hmm. So it's time now for that if we want to move into purpose. Yes. And step one is admitting you have a problem, like an AA. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it really is. And it will free you in ways that you never thought. And it's not all you that's doing the work. So don't think it's so hard yeah. and unbearable and it's not possible, yeah. especially if it's something I think of myself. There's many things that I've tried doing over and over and over again, and you get very discouraged and you want to keep doing it because you're like, oh, it's not going to happen or whatever. No, it's possible. You can overcome anything so you need others to help you god is an overcome he overcame for us so that is possible so uh, just remember that get yourself in a community of people um it's absolutely necessary check out our blogs yeah behind the confidence smile.com and becoming secure.com oh are we subscribe yeah subscribe
and share your events. Okay, <laughs> so I'm having a book launch April 13th. Yes, look, you guys. It's pink. And gals. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Taking Breaks with Jesus, you all. My first ever really? book. It's a 30-day devotional. Yes. Uh, it's about being able to take moments and breaks and rest with Lord um, in a busy world because we have a busy, busy And she world. released her fear to do this. Yeah. Yes, I did. She's a product. I'm releasing fear. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I have more and more books in my yes. head that are coming out. So I know mm -hmm. she, I know she'll be pushing me. You hear her. Mm -hmm. She knows she'll be pushing me. So we just want to thank you, Bianca, Thanks for, for coming me. and this for sharing part of you and um, a Anytime. part of your journey and how you've overcome fear. And I hope you all have gotten something out of that. Please share, uh, continue to share um, yeah. with people um, because there's so many people, so many people that struggle with fear. Um, and it's almost, you know, like an epidemic. But guess what? Love, perfect love casts out fear. It does. I'm learning that. <laughs> And I'm learning what perfect love is. So I hope you all will go on that journey with us. Yes. So have a great night. Good night. Thanks for tuning in.